Hey guys, this is uh, Alrighty Then, and today I wanted to talk to you about something uh, that happened to me. Um, it may happen to you, and these are the things that you need to do to prevent it, or if it happens, you know what to do if it happens. So what happened to me is July, in July, it was a Thursday night, I was playing soccer um, with my friends. It was a 5v5, you know, it's very close quarters. I've been playing soccer for years, and I was going on the attack for the goal. The ball slipped away from my feet, and the goalie cleared it, and unfortunately, my eye was in the way. So the from foot to eye the ball traveled maybe a meter and that was it I had no time to move no time to duck my head I got the ball right in my eye right here and right away I knew something was wrong I've been in the ophthalmic field and yes that's how you say it ophthalmic O-P-H is O-F so I've been in ophthalmology for the past 20 years and um, I've seen cases of it come into the OR, in the ER, and so I, I know, um, I'm not a lay person when it comes to things that happen to your eyes. So I've been exposed to it, I kinda know what happens. So immediately when I got hit in the eye, um, I knew something was different. It wasn't painful, uh, it wasn't, uh, I mean it hurt, but it wasn't like, you know, ah, my eye! the eyes it wasn't like that it's just you know I got hit in the eye it was like a slap in the face and immediately I knew something was wrong so the first things that I noticed was when I moved my eye from left to right so if I just kind of did this look right and left I saw that there was a little jiggle which wasn't there before so for example if I looked with my with my left eye if I looked left and right the eye was very steady so it would stop 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 when I did it with my right eye, when I would look, it would kind of jiggle. And then when I would look the other way, it would kind of jiggle. So that was the first um, thing that told me something was wrong. Also, if you've ever played Fruit Ninja, uh, people who have long eyes or people who are myopic tend to have a predisposition to retinal detachments or retinal tears. Um... So my eye is pretty long. I have a 25.8 millimeter long eye. The average is about a 23. So my eye is two millimeters bigger. Now in terms of eyes, that's kind of long. So that's why I'm myopic. Um, <clears throat> I also have this thing called lattice degeneration, which is something that most myopics have. It's when the, um, the superior part of the retina, the one that's closest to the uh, cornea to the aura which is around the the cornea or in towards the anterior part of the eye uh, it, it's just very thin and there's a little bit of uh, atrophy in that area if you will and not quite atrophy but it's just a little bit thinner than usual um, so that kind of predisposes you to have retinal detachments which I've had and I've been hit in the face a couple times and nothing's ever happened but this was a really really hard impact to the eye so if you've ever played Fruit Ninja, they say that if you ever see flashes and things like that, you should always come to the OR or the ER if you have that predisposition. If you ever see new floaters, you should always come to the ER if you have that predisposition. So with me, if you've ever played Fruit Ninja and you swipe, uh, you see the little white flash on the fruit, that's exactly what my eye, that's what I saw inside my eye. So imagine that when I would wiggle my eye from left to right, that would kind of snap the eye and, it, and I would see a little whoosh, and then on this side I would see a whoosh, whoosh. So imagine again if you were seeing these little flashes of light. So it's not a flash of light like on a camera flash, but they were little um, like stripes of light that were going whoosh, whoosh. <coughs> So um, I went home that night, the next morning, I woke up, I looked outside, and since there was more light, I could definitely see that there was more floaters. So my floaters had changed, I had these flashes, and I figured, you know what, this is not a posterior vitreous detachment that's pulling on the retina. I kind of knew that that's not what it was. Because sometimes you have this uh, jelly-like material in your eye called vitreous, and sometimes there's a... Uh, there's a, a hyloid, which is a, a membrane that kind of keeps it all together. 
Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but just to kind of make it simple, sometimes that membrane may peel off the retina. And normally, under normal circumstances, it's a normal thing and everybody gets it eventually. So you get a posterior vitreous detachment. And most of the time, everybody gets it with age. It detaches from the retina and you're okay, so it's not a problem. Well, in my case, the... Um, the, ret the vitreous had already detached, so I knew it wasn't a posterior vitreous detachment kind of pulling on my retina, because sometimes that will cause flash. As the vitreous detaches from the retina, it can kind of tug on it, which causes a little flash, and <coughs> most of the time that's it. You just see it one time, but with me, I knew physiologically something changed in my eyes. So right away, I went to the ER, and they did a laser treatment um, of the tear. So I'm going to pause for, well, I can't pause because this is uh, on my iPad, but I have a picture of it. Let me, let me, oh, come on. Let me, uh, let me bring it up here real quick. So you guys can see what happened. So moral of the story is anytime you see anything like that happen, if you have that predisposition, it's really important that you go to the ER right away. So when I went to the ER, they diagnosed me with this retinal tear. Okay, so here's a picture of my eye. Let's see if we can focus on that. Let's see. That's the tear right there. Let me move it back a little bit. So I got a horseshoe tear. So right inside here, there's a little horseshoe shape. It's kind of hard to see. But what they did initially was that they did a bunch of laser around the tear. And what that does is it, it's almost like welding the retina to the sclera. So it's welding the retina to the inside of the eye so that it doesn't come off. So you're causing these little micro burns and these micro burns cause scarring and they kind of weld the retina. So it takes a couple days before this, <coughs> this weld holds and then you know you're okay. So I had uh, a week went by and uh, there's the tear again. A week went by and I hemorrhaged so I had a little bleed in my eye so they had to do more laser. So they did more laser around this top area right here because it was kind of getting a little loose and that was some blood inside my eye that I could see so it started off with a little tear and what the tear looks like is you know when um, they have banners on uh, on fences and sometimes they'll cut out these little slits so that the air can go through so that it doesn't uh, come off that's exactly what a horseshoe tear looks like so when that happens the fluid starts to go underneath the retina and the retina starts to detach. So you have to address it right away. You cannot have a tear and not do anything about it. You must address it right away. So if you ever get a retinal tear, if you ever get hit in the eye, it is imperative that you go to the ER right away. Because the fluid will eventually creep inside that little hole, the tear, and the retina will just start detaching. And once it detaches, if it gets too bad and you leave it there for too long, you're going to go blind and there's really no way to get it back. So I had one laser treatment. I hemorrhaged. I had a bleed inside my eye around that area of the tear. They did more laser to seal that area, to cauterize the blood. Um, a week later, there was a <coughs> another little spot close to the anterior portion that was weak or loose again so again they did a more laser I was cleared to go work and my job in, in, uh, involves me flying a lot so um, I also had this vitreous membrane that was going across the retina kind of tugging on it so you know it's either it, it, it was inevitable that my retina was going to detach because of this membrane but I, went, I flew to Kentucky and on my way back to Kentucky, the retina, I could just see it come down like this. So imagine if this computer screen is, if, the, if this is what you can see, right? And when the retina detaches, all of a sudden, I could see this little thing like this come in. So I could see this little amount, I was losing that much vision. And then 
it was like a curtain. They also they also call it a curtain or a veil. But I could see this thing just kind of coming down, coming down, coming down. And my vision just started going, 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 going until essentially it was like almost half gone. So um, that happened. I landed in Miami on like at midnight and I could see just a little bit of it like that. It was about this much that I was losing. So right away I uh, went to the ER at Bascom Palmer. I went to the ER. They admitted me and they went on to perform the surgery. So the surgery that they performed was a vitrectomy which is they go in and they suck the vitreous out of your eye. The vitreous is this jelly-like substance that's in the back of your eye. So they sucked it all out and then they filled my eye with a gas or with an air bubble. Um, and the air bubble kept my retina stuck to the eye. It, keep, it, it, it helps, the air bubble helps keep the retina stuck. So for example, if I were to, let's say this is my retina and my retina is detached, right? So this is my retina, let's say that my face is my eye and the retina is just kind of loose like this. So what happens is when they put, when you have, imagine if my head was in water, the retina would just be floating around in the water with no problem. But when they put the air bubble in your eye, since the retina is wet, as the air bubble starts to, uh, as they start to sucking the fluid out and putting the air, the retina tends to stick to the back of the eye because it's still wet and the water kind of acts as like uh, that, that little, the, uh, the water kind of acts as a little sticky, like a little glue to keep the retina stuck. So when you take the air out, whatever moisture is left inside the, when you take the fluid out, whatever moisture is left inside the eye just kind of helps keep the retina stuck. So after the surgery, they ask you to keep your head down, so your face down, for two weeks. And what that does, it keeps the bubble up so that that part of the eye that they that they operated on can stay stuck. So remember, if you were to, it's like if, if you took a piece of paper, if you took a wet piece of paper and threw it in your tub, it would stick to the side of the tub. If you fill your tub up with water, the paper would eventually start floating and, and unstick. So that's exactly what happens with a retinal surgery when they do a fluid air gas exchange. So again, imagine if you had a tub and you had a piece of paper floating around in the tub and you drained all the water. When you drain all the water, the paper is just gonna stick to the side of the tub. Just like when you get those uh, uh, stickers on your car and it rains and they stick to the window, even though there's no glue, the paper just automatically sticks to your glass and you gotta scrape it off. Same thing, as long as there's no water there uh, and no rain, it doesn't stick. So same thing with your eye when they drain the fluid out of your eye and put the air bubble, the retina just tends to stick to the side and that's what helps it get back to, to normal. So it's really important if you ever have the surgery that yes, you keep your head down for two weeks and you cannot lift anything heavy, you can't be jiggling your eye, you can't be shaking your head, you can't be scratching or rubbing. It's super important that you do that. Listen, listen to me now and believe me later. You have to pay attention, okay? So two weeks after I had the surgery, or um, for two weeks I had to keep my head down. It was hard, but I, I did it. I, I kept my head down, I had to sleep on my face, I had to, everything you have to do with your head down. Um, as a result of having the surgery and the trauma, you're always putting steroids in your eye to keep the swelling down. I had, um, I ended up, uh, the bubble lasted approximately six weeks after the two weeks. So eight weeks altogether I had the bubble after which I was able to fly again and go back to work. So um, be prepared to take a medical leave if you have to, if you can. Uh, most uh, jobs offer you some type of compensation for that. But it, it's something that it is your site and you have to take care of it. So just, so June 23rd is when I had the full-blown retinal detachment in the surgery. So we are now in November. Today's election day. God bless us all. Amen. Um, <coughs> so uh, on November 4th, I think it was November 4th on a Friday, I ended up having a cataract removed. 
So the lens in my eye got cloudy because of the trauma, because of the surgery, and because of all the steroids that I was taking in my eye. It's inevitable, it's gonna happen. So they ended up putting, they took my cataract out, they put an artificial lens in my eye, and they peeled a membrane that was left over that was on top of my retina. So sometimes some of the cells that are behind the retina, they migrate to the top of the retina and they cause this membrane. It's almost like, uh, imagine a petri dish and the mold starts to spread, but it's like a blanket and you can just peel it off. So they had to do that as well. So hopefully now, I'll be able to see a lot better. I can already see uh, a better. The cataract was driving me crazy. My pupil was dilated and the light was just bugging me. So these are the things that you have to look forward to when you have a traumatic injury to your eye. So um, listen to what the doctors tell you. Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm a very active guy. I like to be out there doing things, but I had to really not do anything. I gained some weight. I used to be 190, now I'm 200. It's only 10 pounds, but for me, it's a big deal. I don't like, uh, you know, I like, I like to be around 180, 185. Um, but you know what, you have to suck it up and you can't do anything. So if you ever have a traumatic injury to your eye, go to the doctor. If you ever see any flashes, if you are myopic, that means you wear thick glasses. That means you, can, you can't see far. If you can't see far, that means you're myopic. You have a minus prescription. The higher your prescription, usually the longer your eye, the more predisposition you have to um, these type of things. And, and sometimes you can spontaneously get a retinal tear, even without doing anything. Sometimes it can be something very minor. Sometimes it can be um, just a small hit. Sometimes when the vitreous detaches, it can tear the retina. So if you have that predisposition, if you've been told by a doctor that that's something that can happen to you, go to the ER right away. It, uh, it's, e it's easier to have that laser done right away and prevent all these things from happening. So just because you get a tear doesn't mean you're gonna have a retinal detachment, but it's, uh, it's in your best interest to take care of a retinal tear right away. So um, I guess if you guys have any questions or comments in the, uh, you can go ahead and place them in the comments. Uh, if you have anybody that's had a retinal detachment or that has a retinal detachment currently, you may want to have them listen to this uh, video. It's, uh, it's not a bad thing. I mean, it, you know, it's not a good thing, but there is hope. So right now I had a total, not a total retinal detachment, but it was like a, a partial hemi retinal detachment. And right now my prognosis is very good because I took care of it right away. The quicker you take care of it, the better prognosis you have and the better vision you'll get. If you don't do anything about it, you're going to go blind out of that eye. And let me tell you, I'm very grateful that the doctors at Bascom Palmer took care of me and uh, they were very great and um, I, you know, owe them for the surgery but also uh, I attribute the success to going to the ER right away as soon as it happens and not kind of puts in around. A lot of people, they get hit in the eye, they start seeing stuff and they're like, ah, it'll be better in the morning. Two days go by, then all of a sudden, boom, they get that rental detachment. You could prevent that by having laser treatment. Laser. It's possible to prevent that. So again, if you know somebody that's going through this type of surgery, have them watch the video so they can get an explanation of what's happening to them. Um, if you have eye, uh, long eyes or if you've been told this, also, you know, listen. And if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. I'm not a doctor, but like I said, I've been in the field for 20 years. Um, and if I don't know the answer, I can direct you to somebody that does. Anyway, you guys have a great day. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. God bless. Talk to you guys later.